Hello everybody, welcome to WomenLines.com. Yes, friends, today is Stella Entrepreneur Show. Health is fre- wealth, friends, as you all know. And at Women Lines, we lay, we work so much towards creating awareness how you can be a healthier version of self. Today, we are having a stellar entrepreneur from Bangalore, India, who is a health and fitness coach, helping people to lose weight and strengthen the entire body using mind programming. She is a Guinness record holder for the world's longest aerobics marathon for 26 hours nonstop. Dinaz Vavitwala, founder and CEO of Dinaz Fitness, is a renowned coach and speaker in wellness since 1993. As a digital entrepreneur, her vision in the future is to spread her mantra of physical and mental wellness to an audience of corporates as well as the public at large. Welcome, Dinaz, to my show. Thank you so much, Aru. Small correction, I'm from Hyderabad. But oh, I an, just assumed yeah. that you are in from Bangalore. That's, so, so that, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and it's a pleasure and an honor to be part of your show. Thank you for choosing me and giving me this opportunity to spread the light in our country and the world around. <laughs> My pleasure, Dinas. So, Dinas, please share about your business and about yourself as a person. So, I started my journey in 1991 when my older son was born. Okay. Back in those days, I was doing my chartered accountancy. Mm -hmm. But as soon as baby was born, I felt very unfit and uh, not comfortable enough to look after the baby as to be tired and irritable all the time. Mm -hmm. That's when I thought that if I have to look after the kid all the time, Mm -hmm. then I have to be fit as a mom. So as a young 23-year-old mom, I decided to work on my own body. And within six months, I got my dream body back and I got my energy levels back. For me, it was more about my energy levels back. And I was doing my chartered accountancy at that time. At that time, I decided to uh, quit my CA profession. Mm -hmm. And I spent a whole year on educating myself, did the world's top most certifying body programs, got certified and started with my first center year in Hyderabad in 1993. Awesome to know. That's so inspirational. Six months you got yourself back. That is really amazing. We take so many years. So yes, what are the three most important habits to be a successful entrepreneur? Can you share some insights? In the thing, three things that have worked for me is discipline, dedication, and high value systems. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So discipline is something which we always talk about at Women Alliance for our women entrepreneurs and professionals that any habit which has to be developed regularly, consistency is the key. So discipline only brings that consistency. And I'm sure your audience must be following that with you. Can you share some sales tip as a business entrepreneur? I'm sure you must be having some journey for yourself when you started your business as a health coach. Yeah. So can you share some tip with us, which can help us in the sales? So the first thing about my journey is uh, resilience. When I was at the peak of my career in, uh, I started in 1993 and I was at the peak of my career, name, fame. I was training a lot of thousands of people. I had six gyms in Hyderabad. The most important thing was I also had uh, uh, the privilege of coaching a lot of celebrities here in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. To name a few, Sri Chandra Babu Naidu, uh, the ex-chief minister of Andhra Pradesh. That time he was the chief minister. I was working with him and his entire family for nearly 20 years. And I worked with Chiranjeevi Megastar, his wife, and her entire family, the production house of uh, the Tollywood industry. And I also had the privilege of working with a lot of sports celebrities like BVS Lakshman and uh, Pulela Gopichan, Saina Nehwal, to just to name, to name a few. Wow. It was, I was at the peak of my career when in 2005, I met with a major fire accident and I was down to 53% burns. Oh dear. That's when the concept of sales first hit me. The doctors told me that I would be in the hospital for an entire year. But I knew that my body was burnt and my mind was not burnt. As an entrepreneur, I would not... I did not take no for an answer. And I said that I'm not going to sit in that hospital bed for a whole year. So I put my mind to task and with over 50% burns and having lost my voice and my lung burns, 
I came back to work within three months. When I came back to work, my clients did not realize, did not think that I would be able to bounce back. So a lot of people dropped out and a lot of people moved out. So the business was down. Must but be. as an entrepreneur, giving up was never an option. And I restarted. And one of the first sales tips that I want to share with everyone is be faithful to the small. So I restarted my career again. And even if there were three people in my uh, gym, I was very faithful and I was training and coaching them as if there were 10 or 20 people in the room. And that way, people's confidence levels in me grew up, uh, built up and they started coming and it was all word of mouth. In sales, what has worked for me tremendously is giving when they take one step towards me, I take a hundred without even realizing it. And then it is word of mouth that actually brings people back into the system. So a lot of people again re came back and rejoined. So that's really worked for me. Amazing to know this. This is so inspirational, Dinas, because this is the real entrepreneurship journey. I always say in my talks that being an entrepreneur is like walking in a park, but that park is a dinosaur park. And from where some dinosaur comes up, we have to be prepared to face it and keep moving ahead. So here we are yeah. doing some real life inspirational story which you have shared with us and thanks for sharing and highlighting it with us because this is a real test in life and still you are here in front of the so successful and you never stopped yourself and you never served that time and that's amazingly inspirational to us what are the biggest challenges you have faced in your business and how have you faced it now we know that yeah that was something which must be tough so you want to share more insights about yeah, so uh, Charu, when anyone speaks to me, I speak very openly because I keep my journey and my uh, life very transparent and open with people. The goal is only to inspire people. Uh, after being at the peak of my career, yes, I did the Guinness record for the world's longest aerobics marathon and so many things were happening. That was in 2010. But in 2013, we hit a major roadblock in our career. Okay. And then 2013, we had to shut down most of our gyms and we kept only one gym alive because okay. the cost versus the people that the amount of money that people were willing to pay in this industry, there was a huge mismatch. So um, we shut down five gyms and we relocated to a smaller location and we worked on in one gym. My journey was not that good at that time. And for those 20, 25 years, I had never taken a salary. So I didn't know what it was to even earn any money. So as an entrepreneur, that is one of the things that most people will face. And as an entrepreneur, you're the last person who gets paid. And that was the same thing in my journey. In 2014, I finally reached a point where I told myself that if I can't do things for my family, why am I doing things for other people? Sorry. And I shut down. And I moved out of Hyderabad because I knew that the, see, I had such a huge fan following in Hyderabad that people were not going to let me go. So I chose to move out of the city mm -hmm. and I took to another, uh, another profession of baking some as a home baker. Okay. But I knew that was not my uh, forte Actually. and that was not something that I wanted to do. So I, I went into deep meditation in 2015. I came out of that meditation in 2016 and I told myself, no, this is my calling. And my calling is Hyderabad. So I was in Mumbai that time. I came back to Hyderabad and I restarted my journey as a fitness personal trainer. So a person who had never been to from a celebrity coach. Right. I became a personal trainer going from home to home and saying that, okay, I'll do personal training. And in those days, people... Personal trainers, even celebrities used to pay only 20,000 rupees per month. So I barely got about a lakh, lakh and a half per month. And that was about six hours of work. And I kept telling myself that this is not why I'm born. I'm born for bigger and better things in my life. Me too. And so giving up, for me as an entrepreneur, giving up was never an option. So I kept telling the universe and I kept telling myself, what next? How do I, how do I build my passion and how do I reach out to the masses in the country right. that's when I first met my online coach and I started working towards being a digital entrepreneur digital uh, coach and I once again went back to the drawing board studied for a whole year I got certified as a digital entrepreneur just so that I could give my I could give a great experience digitally 
in the health and fitness industry. Today, I'm a digital entrepreneur, digital coach in the health and fitness industry. And I'm really grateful that I have a community of over 4,000 people from across the country and a lot of people from across the world. So challenges have come, but um, for you me, giving up never, been, not never been an option. Thank you so much for sharing that story also because again, this is the real entrepreneurial journey. It's always not so green and whenever we have reds, we should not stop. That lesson we are learning from Dinas today. So yes, how do you boost your productivity, the work productivity without causing burnout? Because I'm sure there must be huge stress behind and the work hours must be so hectic. How you manage everything? Nice question, Charu. Uh, my expertise is using the power of my own mind, which I dug into many years ago. Okay. And I do have very long hours. I start my day at 4.45 in the morning. Okay. And I end my day at 10 o'clock, including family time and cooking and work and everything. But what works for me is between 4.45 and 5.45, it's my time where I work on my affirmations, visualization, goal setting, everything. So work, I am work in progress every single, every single day of my life. I'm never saying that I'm sleepy. I don't want to do this today. So that itself gives me a very positive boost throughout the day. Secondly, as soon as I come to my office, I come to my office room by about 9, 9.30 in the morning after I finish my chores as a mother, as a housewife, etc. And as soon as I come here, the first thing I do is very calmly write down all the things that I need to do in my uh, diary that day and what has really worked for me is I don't pack in my day and I write every minute thing if I have to go to the supermarket to buy my vegetables that is also put in my list as a to-do list and I'll only write what I'm 100% sure of finishing and it gives me great thrills to keep ticking so by 2-3 o'clock I'm done with everything Wow. of taking up all my tasks and then other routine jobs, some one-to-one -one calls, some interviews, some shows, some YouTube videos, whatever is that extra time. And then I spend two hours of my day on my own self for my own workout. So I work out once in the morning for an hour and I work out for an hour in the evening. So all that helps me to keep my time management going. Wow, Dinaz, I'm learning amazingly today, friends. It's awesome session we are having with Dinaz because... Yes, a true entrepreneur in all way. And yeah, this should be the attitude. This should be the way. The things which we talk at Women Lies. It's so important to have the disciplined presence for yourself, personal care. And that can be done morning best way. And then writing a list and giving yourself time, meditation. All these things helps in clarity. So hats off, Dinas, for coming out. Yeah this taking care of yourself best way and sharing this tip with us. What was your Thank most you. significant aha moment so far? What want to share with us? I think the, in life till now. My yeah. most significant aha moment has been not even the Guinness event. My most significant aha moment was ma for many years I have been waiting and striving to work towards a better India, a healthier India. So that globally, people will start coming to us and understand what's really working. So I want to make 7 a.m. as the workout hour in our country. Whether I do it through my YouTube channel or whether I do it through my live sessions that I do now or whether I do it through uh, TV channels, whatever it is. Now my vision is that 7 a.m. will be a workout hour. And today I can see confidently that Close to 600 people are attending my live sessions live. My goodness. And amazing. that has been that the biggest aha moment and the deepest gratitude that people trust me and they right. come and they are making a change in their lives. And I know that in turn, they will create a ripple effect and their families will get fit. So it's the larger vision now that I'm working towards. Money and everything as an entrepreneur has become a byproduct for me. Wow, Dinaz, again, hats off to you. This is really inspirational because, yeah, I mean, I'm really wondering, the moment is not that moment when you made that record. And this moment is giving you that happiness as you want to reach out yeah. to as many and make them realize importance of health and self-care and exercise every day. 
may God bless you. And I'm sure you're you. going to reach multiple people, multiple geographies you will cross. I have strong faith in you. So my last question, Thank here's you. some message for uh, my Women Lines audience. For the entrepreneurs or women audience? I take it as women audience. Okay. I think my biggest um, message to all the women out there is that most of the women have said that they don't have the time for themselves because they are constantly dedicating their time to their workplace or their families. And this is a change that I made when I was very young. I was just 23 years and I told myself that if I have to look after my family, I have to look after myself. And today... I can confidently say that that has worked for me tremendously. So take a step back in your lives, women. Take a step back. Look after your own bodies. Look after your own mind. Cut out the negative clutter from your area. And declutter your homes and declutter your own space so that you have clear clarity on what you want to achieve. Lovely message. I myself strongly believe in this because yes, the decluttering of mind with decluttering of the surrounding helps amazingly friends. So take a note of this, take action for this. And yes, Dana, thank you so much for your time. And I wish you all the best. May all your dreams come true. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.